what did he say? He said, raise your hand if you want to be a professional speaker. And everybody's hand would go up. And then he would say, okay, now raise your hand if you record yourself every time you speak. And a few <laughs> hands went up. And he would say, it's the same question, folks. If you can't listen to yourself, why in the world should you expect other people Ooh. to listen to yourself? Hello, touche. God bless America. All right. The audience is the main character. That's the last time we're live. We hope to be live again soon. I want to give you a quick update on the power of visualization. I don't know if you listened to it in the email. You know, we've gone through this all year. I hope and pray you're on the journey with me. And if it's not too late to create a vision board in the digital age, it's easier than ever. But it's powerful, truly powerful to have your goals in front of you on a regular basis and to know what you're attempting to accomplish. Because it's hard enough out there when you're in the bewilderment. But when you're focused, it, it's a journey. And I've been sharing that journey monthly in a very short audio update and they're embedded in the emails you can see that and you can have access to other months if you wish in addition to refereeing my second job my third job on the media channel here which i really do as a passion i published about 200 videos over the last Ooh. two months it's i think about 193 it'll be 200 by the time the finals are done this weekend and those are little segments that you can see there that you can see on the kg now and i just provide that as an update just to encourage you guys to have a vision board to go along that journey with me to listen to the audio updates if you want to talk about associations here's some of the things i published nearly 100,000 associations i'll eat humble pie on that line in just a minute or two and how to identify groups and a proven process for pursuing these gigs i'm going to show you that tonight that's a value i hope you are thinking from your topic and just don't don't be overwhelmed don't think okay well when i'm ready i can do that think what one or two contacts could i scrape off this exercise or somehow identify in the next day or two and then just outreach just as a process as a step in that journey for the associations market and how to identify those decision makers i want to know from you guys real quick what does the word associations mean to you please anyone <laughs> it's pretty groups of like-minded individuals there you go perfect that meet, that meet regularly HOAs that pay, pay for speakers. So I hear common and common groups, and I also hear community or meeting regularly forums, right? Yeah. And that's good. And that's good. And that historically, I think, is what associations are really all about. So, and you can see some information there on the screen around how they're defined in the public sphere. But what I believe is there at the bottom, they're there for industry people whoever's in the ecosystem, there are many variants in an ecosystem. There's buyers, there's suppliers, there's partners, there's customers, there's end users, there's you know logistics, there's finance partners, there's all sorts of elements to a true ecosystem of an industry. And all those elements have some type of opportunity to involve themselves in the various associations of that industry. But I see it as connect and grow educate, lobby, that's a big, big, big one. And then I think spin is also an important part of the large association markets. So here's my idiot move on the 92,000, nearly 100,000. If you look there on the far right, it's 2011, kind of scatterbrained some days. My early research, I relied on one of my first queries and used that as my punchline. And then more appropriately, the directory of associations shows about 35,000. But yeah, so I'll eat the humble pie on that one. But I do promise to give you a state of the current situation with associations, along with these other tools that have been highlighted. Guys, interrupt me anywhere you want. I'm kind of just rolling, so I'm not really watching, but I, I want to make sure you guys are getting value from this. So how many associations are there really? Well, let's think about it from a local, state, national, and international perspective. And we'll come back to that. Right here is from a directory of associations. They have a database of supposedly 35,000 plus across that whole sphere, local to, to, to the largest. And I'm gonna use that to do a search, but I'm gonna narrow it down a little bit and I'm gonna do it for nutrition. So the American Society for Nutrition is one and then the other one's there. I'm just gonna keep going and show you some of what I was able to discover. So this is a, a large event, supposedly, that's coming up very soon online, excellent nutrition 
research and practice. So as you can imagine, this can get kind of clinical, right? So sometimes there's an element that is maybe not in this exact spot you're headed for, but it helps you orient to the larger side of the business. And this is right off their website. So identify decision makers. There's lots of different levels of decision makers. We'll talk about that in a second, different types of decision makers. But these are executives that are public facing information right there on their website and you can identify their organization. That's pretty easily sourced information. And the, the directory actually, this is a sample download. I know you can't see it, but it has the name of the organization. It has the contact information, the email, the phone number, et cetera. And that's just a sample download. Now this is a gem you can use in lots of cases. Hunter.io I use regularly because it's a free site to go to, to plug in an enterprise's domain name plug in that name like nutrition.org and you can see what it's come up with it's showing me the common domain format is the first initial last name at the domain it doesn't give you the exact address but if you know the name it'll give you the likely format for that organization this i'm going to do a search on the state of california 687 listings found as state associations wow does everybody know what I meant earlier? And we'll talk about it a little bit further. But when I talked about local, state, national, international, does that make immediate sense to everyone? Well, duh. Well, no, let's not humiliate anyone. Did you this just always, call it stupid? This, this always wasn't clear to me either. But we'll get back to it. So let's look at California Grocers Association. Now, part of the reason I pivot to here is one, it came up in our state. And I know about the profit is an honor in his hometown and you got to go large and, you know, national travel. But we're also a very big state. So there's lots of markets in our state that are not our hometown. I mean, there's 21 million people just in our backyard door. Right. So we're, no, we're shrinking as a state, but we're still a bit, pretty big market. So let's look at California Grocers Association just for a minute or two. And I'll show you something here. First of all, they do events. Right, so that's an interesting thing. Your speakers, events, virtual or not, need content, they need delivery, they need value. They do a publication, California Grocers Association, California Grocer. Another opportunity. This is publicly available information on their website. Now, I think I zoom in on the next slide. You see the columns that they put in their magazine, as well as the key contact information. California Grocers, CGA, they do publications, multiple publications, not just their, their flagship product, their, their grocer magazine. They have a variety of events and conferences and other types of outings. That'll be interesting. And oh, here's current state. I did Google for have trade associations change and what comes up but an NPR article from 2011. So that makes me wonder about how strong associations are pre-pandemic, let alone after pandemic. So let's talk real quick about what I was able to uncover just in my brief research around seven association trends. This is from Personify, Wild Apricot, from not quite a year ago, about six months ago, Tatiana Moran appears to be the author and we'll touch on some of these. Oops, I missed one. Okay, your online presence is more important than ever. Yeah, every association you're not meeting in person, you better have an online engagement model where your membership can get value. Members are seeking mentorship. And that's an interesting thing because, and I'll let you read some of that real quick. Wow. Unemployment, job changes, professional development. Those are all dynamics that are relevant. Ooh. And so we've got a bonus bullet that I've slid in here. You want a prize? A bonus bullet. I'm supposed to have some sound bites, but I got so stressed out starting the meeting, I don't have that. Can take your career to the highest levels. Associations can take your career to the highest level. Does anybody want to take a wild stab at what I mean by that? Uh, visibility. Visibility is in a very important dynamic yes anybody else credibility credibility it's all the same thing yeah you're right if it's good it's all the same thing visibility when it's not credible i guess isn't good but here's how so she take your career to real heights the highest levels and i mean this and i mean it especially for younger professionals you're new in an industry there are associations that are specific to your industry who runs these associations 
these are big wigs in the industry, aren't they? These aren't like small fish. I mean, sure, some of them might be fools or just, you know, whatever. But a lot of these people are highly accomplished professionals that have spent decades in their industry. They're well connected and they carry a lot of credibility. So if you come in and oh, by the way, do you think these people have any needs? Do you think Lindsay Allen, a PhD and RD, the president of nutrition or yeah, this is the nutrition group. She has committees that she doesn't have people working. She has other initiatives that she would like to get to that she's got no resource to go execute on. You're, if you're a young professional, you, you want to establish more of a resume. You want to establish more references. There's not a better way, in my view, than to engage an association as a committee volunteer and work your full butt off for a year, year and a half, and win the respect and honor of the folks you serve and have them play that back for you in the years to come. I think it's a phenomenal way for just about any industry, any industry for people to advance, especially younger professionals. So I don't wow. mean to drum on that too much, but I really encourage younger people to get involved in the industry because they need workers and you can contribute and it's highly visible as Victor says. Okay, back to our seven trends. What are we on, number three real quick? Associations are getting created with new sources of revenue. No kidding. The, the membership streams aren't there, so they've got to find new ways to get revenue. And they're investing in better remote work systems. That shouldn't be a surprise, right? Whatever that means for their constituents. And associations are working with event sponsors in new ways. So out of tragedy comes opportunity with COVID and the pandemic. There's all sorts of new models emerging for sponsorship. And I always want you speakers when you think about your brand, and especially for you, David, I think there's you could go out and find a half dozen of companies you could be a part-time spokesperson for and really find synergy and value for those organizations as well as your own message and platform. Um, associations, so some new sponsors, and there's seven. I'm not going to go through all seven. I left two un unlisted. They're valuable. You can check it out. I do that just to help thank Tatiana. But let's talk about proven processes, local to large, thought leader, and this last one, inside out. We're not going to take a lot of time, but local to large to me is you go speak at a state, a, a local chapter meeting, pick your association, California grocers, you go speak at their local chapter meeting, then you get a referral to another local chapter meeting, you go speak there. You're not getting paid, it's the rubber chicken, you might get a meal, but you're gaining credibility, you're refining your message, and you're getting them to understand that you have value for their broader organization. And you're helping them get feedback to hone your message specific to their needs as a larger organization, more strategic value. And as you do that, you then get leverage to go to the state level. And so you speak at a state event or do a special program for them at a state level that you target. And then you go to a national or international level. And maybe you have to go to a couple states along the way that are unpaid. But I'm telling you, when you get to the national, international level, if your message is on point and value to that association, you're going to get paid. And some of those aren't small dollars. Thought leader, number two in the proven processes. The first one was what? Anybody? What was it called? The first one? <laughs> They're going to be a test. Yeah. Anybody? Might it be local to large? Yes. And the second one is thought leader. And you probably know what I'm talking about here, but those magazines need content. They're dying for content. You know how many sleepless nights those editors get because they don't have any content. You can push them content. Look what this says. This article is brought to you by Community Brands, a leading provider of based software to associations. Click here to read more about our Preparing for 2021 and Beyond Benchmark Report. Do you think in California grocers, the people who read that magazine would be interested in an article about Preparing for 2021 and Beyond Benchmark Report? Of course they would, right? So that's an organization that's putting their brand and giving a call to action in front of their market through content. It's probably a sponsored ad content piece. But again, most of these associations are dying for fresh content that's, that's hitting the mark for their needs of their members and their markets. That it's if you aim the right content, we've talked about it earlier about how to aim content a little bit, then you can get here. Inside out. Anybody want to tell me what inside out might wow, be? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'll get through this. Hang in there, folks. We got some great speakers coming up next. Inside out is kind of what it sounds. You've got these events. 
Now, I don't know if we've done rolls yet. So maybe, we have, maybe there's a slide that's out of order here yet because I still want to talk about rolls. But inside out, look at this from the C California grocers. As a relationship-driven industry, retailers, suppliers, and wholesalers come together to network, learn, and build their businesses. And that's golf outings. It's all sorts of Caltrans and their suppliers, golf events. I mean, a lot goes on at these things. But inside out, let me ask you this. You know who that is, right, Rod Stewart? Yeah. When he goes, when he comes into a hotel, a beautiful hotel, do you think he goes in the front door with the, the fan blowing the dust off and the nice carpeting or the marble floor and the chandelier and the bright big ceilings? Or do you think he comes through the back door in the kitchen and the, the loading dock? Well, these days it might be at the front door, but back in well, the 80s. <laughs> well, right, right. Now a lot of places have VIP entrances, so the loading dock's a little upgraded. But typically he's going through the back door, and it's the same with these association meetings. This is LinkedIn for California Grocers Association. So Ron is the president and CEO. There's three people there that I know that he knows, supposedly. And with three, yeah, it's a pretty good chance one of them likes me. I mean, usually I need five or six to get, ensure I can get one of them on my board. But uh, the three's not a bad number. Seth Sherwood knows the guy from Doug Schultz. You know, you guys know Seth Sherwood, right? Yeah. Uh, and some other folks. So inside out is really just what it sounds. It's the hidden job market. It's finding a way to get referred to people so that you can engage decision makers without coming like you're coming off the bus on the street and, and it just being somebody else saying, raise their hand, pick me, pick me, getting an introduction or referral, something to warm it up a little bit. Well, let's talk real quick about decision makers. Association context. So the administrator sometimes called an executive director. Now, some executive directors are executive level directors and they're serious and they can engage at a high level and they can make decisions and they take responsibility for programs or they have people that do. But a lot of them are administrators who have no decision-making whatsoever. They're just pushing paper. Engaging that those people are trying to serve them is really not a high value use of any speaker's time, in my humble opinion. The meeting planner is an important role, typically represents a body of decision makers and is in administrative in a lot of ways. I think some professionals would say that's completely wrong. Meeting planners or brokers and other people who have real responsibility and they make decision selection decisions around speakers. And that, I, I agree in a lot of cases that is true. But let's go up to number three, the editor. The editor of these magazines, do you think the editor of California Grocer Magazine is a serious position? It sounds like a serious position. It sounds like it serves a billion dollar market or more. And so these people have some influence, but they're an interesting way for you to get the thought leadership. Engaging those people will give you the access to publish content to their people. And if you want to go speak at their national event, get an article or two in their rag in their, in their trade magazine. And chances are you're going to be speaking at one of their national events, in my view. The conference planner, again, sometimes is a, is, a, is a representative of a body of people making decisions that kind of come to a consensus and is trying to fit that mold. Or sometimes they have massive responsibility. And then national leadership always has influence. It kind of comes and goes. If you don't blend with the current leader, know that it's probably going to change in, in, in very soon order. Okay, I want to reference this because if there's any place who has the best information on associations, it is Egg Rigsby. Some speakers want to charge the market and build a brand and go just conquer the world. But some speakers want to ease into paid speaking. And I believe associations are the way to do that. Thank you for hanging in for that. Get paid, get speaking gigs in associations and some of them paid. I'm Kevin Graham for Founders District Speakers Bureau. We got a couple of great speakers coming up. So hang in there. And don't forget, we have an open call for speakers, including our June meeting. We presently have one slot left.